Hi, I'm Chin Liu. And I'm Sal, and this is our next make. We're back in the shop to do another upgrade to this table saw. This time we're focusing on dust collection. Up until now, we've used our shop vac to connect to this four inch reducer to the table saw, and it really hasn't been doing the job. So today we're gonna to build a custom connector that will allow us to take a six inch port out of the table saw and connect it to the main line of our Cyclone dust collector. To get started, I use SolidWorks for Makers to model the design. I'm going for a compact dust chute that mounts to the bottom of the saw and funnels the sawdust out the side through a six inch port. Having a CAD model of my saw lets me verify that there's enough room between the table legs to pull this off. Now I can get to making. What I love about projects like this is that you can make them out of leftover scraps. I had one straight edge on this piece, so I was able to rip it to width on the table saw. But I didn't have a square corner, so I set up my homemade circular saw track. I used a framing square to make sure the track was properly positioned, and then clamped it in place. After making an intentionally oversized cut with the circular saw, I then cut the final dimension at the table saw. Having all of my SOLIDWORKS files saved to the 3D Experience platform lets me quickly review my drawings while I'm in the shop. I'm using my iPad, but this of course would work on any mobile device. Here I'm cutting a few of the rectangular pieces of the dust chute to size. And now I'm laying out for the two tapered sides. Because the pieces are identical, I can make the 45 degree angle cut once, and then stack the parts together to cut the remaining details. I simply set the angles on my miter gauge and cut to my lines. Some of the pieces require beveled edges, so I set the table saw blade to 45 degrees and creep up on the perfect cut. I move my rip fence to the left side of the blade so the material is above the cut and the beveled edge from the first cut rides nicely along the fence when I make the second cut. Here, I'm cutting the two side slopes that funnel the dust into the duct. Zooming in on my drawing, I can see all of the critical dimensions for the upper flange. I use the handy pocket tool that we designed and made last week to lay out the offsets and the stepped details. I rounded all of the inside corners using the half inch radius on the pocket tool and then drilled the corners with a Forstner bit at the drill press. This gave me nice clean rounds and plenty of places to start the cuts with my jigsaw. I dry fit the back wall of the chute and marked the location of the table saw frame. I knew I'd have a tight fit here, so I used a clamp to slightly squeeze the six inch duct until it matched both lines. And then I traced the now slightly oval shape. I drilled another pilot hole at the drill press and then cut the circle with my jigsaw. Afterwards, I used a file to approximate a helical groove that would allow the spiral seam in the duct to fit. It took a little bit of persuasion and a few karate chops, but I got it to seat in place. Since this is really just a glorified lightweight box, I cut pocket holes to prepare for assembly. For aesthetic reasons, I chose to keep most of the holes on the inside, even though in some cases it would have been stronger for the holes to be on the outside. While assembling the box, I used a speed square, a spacer block, and a few clamps to make sure the dust chute didn't get out of whack. Before mounting the top flange, I drilled holes for the four bolts that would hold the chute to the table saw. I worked my way around the chute and screwed in the remaining pieces. With the bottom in place, I could easily position the large incline piece that would act to direct most of the dust to the duct. At this point, the chute is looking really good and we're almost at a point that we can paint the assembly. But before we do, I want to glue the small side slopes in place. I spread a thin bead of glue on the beveled edges and then use a few 23 gauge pin nails to hold the pieces in place while the glue dries. I added a coat of primer to the inside and outside surfaces of the assembly and then two coats of paint to the outside. Once everything was dry, I started to mount the duct and blast gate to the chute. I first pre-drilled holes in the duct and then use those holes to mark and drill for corresponding holes in the sidewall. These will accept a few nails that will hold the duct in place. I pushed the nails in by hand at first, but then since the space was tight, I used a clamp to fully seat the nails. To make the joint airtight and to further secure the nails, I used a series of small pieces of metal tape. I attached the blast gate with three self-tapping sheet metal screws and then added more metal tape to seal any air gaps. Okay, the last thing we have to do is run the ducting from the main line to the table saw. But in order to do that, we first have to get rid of all the stuff on this wall. With the area clean, we can start to cut the ducts to length. I normally do this kind of metal work outside, but as New England decided to greet me with a bit of winter this morning, and with a bunch more precipitation on the way today, I set up inside the garage. I swapped my saw blade for a grinding wheel and started to make cuts. Since this produces a ton of sparks and nasty fumes, I opened my garage door a bit and had a fan going to blow the fumes outside. I also wore all kinds of protective gear. If you're going to use a grinding wheel to cut metal, be sure to play it safe. In addition to the potential for personal injury, 
All of these sparks do pose a fire hazard in a wood shop. I've seen leftover pockets of dust on the miter saw itself form into a small ember when hit by a concentration of sparks from cutting metal. Please take every precaution and consider cleaning your tools of dust before you use them to cut metal. The grinding wheel leaves a bit of a burr on the ducts, so I file down the edges after each cut. At this point, running the duct work is fairly straightforward. After cutting each section to length, I held it in place with three self-tapping sheet metal screws and a layer of air sealing metal tape. The dust chute is bolted to the bottom of the saw using the same holes that were used to hold the original plastic one in place. We temporarily removed one of the leg crossbeams to make it easier to get the chute in place and reattached it to help support the unit while we fastened the bolts. With a bit more effort, we attached the flexible hose and then called this upgrade complete. It feels really great to have finished our last big upgrade for the table saw. And we still have a few more small upgrades to go. So join us next week where we'll be tackling those small projects as well as answering an important question from one of our viewers. Until then, we'll see you on our next make.